SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got questions, we've got answers. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 84 of our SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week on Friday, Chief spotted the underdevelopment SpaceX VIP observation outposts over by Raptor Roost. From these new images, we can see that after grading the sites and covering them with gravel, crews have now begun installing fence posts around the perimeter of the sites while wooden piles are being driven into the ground at the back of one of the outposts. Chief also stopped by the Star Factory expansion to give us an update on the progress of the new construction. As we can see, additional columns and roof sections have gone up on one of the taller nose cone ends of the building. Currently, Tent 3 is used for nose cone construction, and only the completion of this taller end of the Star Factory will allow SpaceX to move nose cone production out of that tent so it can be demolished and pave the way for additional Star Factory expansion. Early on Monday morning, the hot staging ring was once again lifted off of the top of Booster 9 and placed onto a stand next to the launch mount, giving crews access to the top of Booster 9 once again. Later that morning, Chip 30 ventured out of High Bay for the first time as crews worked to reorganize the vehicles inside and parked Ship 30 in the front corner next to the doorway to facilitate installation of the aft flaps. Down at the launch site, the road was closed and the pad cleared for the first time in quite a while. During the closure, Ship 26 underwent a fresh round of cryo testing on Test Stand B. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, a ship transport stand was delivered to the launch site, hinting that Ship 26 may soon be coming off the test stand. Slow but steady progress continues to be made on the ground fabrication building. Exterior cladding has been added on some of the walls, and overhead roll-up doors can be seen on either side of the building. Over at the Rocket Garden, Chief caught the new and improved two-point lifter lane on the ground awaiting its next chance to prove itself as a superior method of lifting starships. We also caught a look inside Mega Bay 1 where we can see the fully stacked Booster 11 as well as the liquid oxygen tank for Booster 13. Just inside the doorway, we can also see the steel beams that have been added recently, likely as a support for a door to be installed in the near future. Around mid-morning, the booster puck shucker was relocated from the rocket garden to the ring yard in preparation for an eventual move into Mega Bay 1 for Booster 11. By Tuesday, progress on the nose cone end of the Star Factory expansion was rapidly approaching the exterior wall on the village side. With only a few columns and roof sections left to place, crews should soon be ready to begin installing the roof and exterior cladding. Parking on the side of the highway across from the Star Factory expansion, we also spotted the girders for a new bridge crane for the Star Factory. While not nearly as beefy as the Mega Bay bridge cranes, the 25-ton capacity on this crane should be more than enough to handle lifting ring sections inside of the new production facility. Down at the launch site, crews have begun new work along the pad side of Highway 4 next to the suborbital tank farm. Concrete is being broken up and a trench dug just off the road. Is SpaceX building a new site perimeter wall in this area or is it something else going on? Let us know your thoughts below. A new picture from Chief gives us a great look at the new stairs that have been added to the side of the orbital launch tower. The stairs now rise above the level of the ship quick disconnect arm and currently terminate at an area of the tower that does not have a floor. This indicates that SpaceX likely plans to eventually extend the staircase all the way to the top of the tower as a means of emergency egress. Even now, almost six months after the first integrated flight test of Starship and Super Heavy, crews are still working on some of the damage. Chief caught crews adding additional reinforcement to the outside of one of the methane-turned-water tanks on the end of the tank farm. This tank took fairly significant damage from flying debris during the launch, with it looking worse off because its insulated shell was more susceptible to damage as it was unsupported internally. Following the removal of the hot stage ring from Booster 9, crews once again erected scaffolding to give them access to the top of the booster from the QD arm. Once again, we see workers on top of the booster, possibly working on the grid fin motors or the hot stage ring hold down clamps. 
Tuesday evening, back at the build site, the first of Ship 30's aft flaps was lifted up right by a crane outside of High Bay and moved to the vehicle for installation. Chief once again stopped by the new SpaceX observation outposts. We can see that trenches have been prepared for the new foundations at one location, while the concrete has already been poured for similar foundations at another site. At a third outpost, several rows of concrete columns are already placed to support the structure of the expected observation platform. On the ground nearby, multiple steel trusses are laying, likely awaiting to be installed on the top of the new columns. At the Massey's test site, work is progressing nicely on the new warehouse and office building that is being constructed. Over the past week or so, several of the building columns have been installed as well as some of the Z-girts that the exterior cladding will eventually be mounted to. Rolling over to the Rocket Garden, two SPMTs, outfitted with connectors and counterweights needed for a ship move, have picked up a ship transport stand in anticipation of the LR-1750 crane being used to transfer Ship 29 from the Puck Shucker to the transport stand in the coming days while it awaits its turn to get its Raptors installed after its recent testing at Massey's. Over at the build site, with Ship 31 now fully stacked and moved off of the turntable and onto a transport stand, Ship 32's nose cone section was moved through the ring yard and into high bay. A few hours later, Ship 32's payload barrel section followed its nose cone into high bay as SpaceX prepared to begin stacking operations on yet another Starship. As soon as the payload section was in the building, the bridge crane moved the nose cone over to the top of the payload barrel and then tandem lifted them both to the turntable. Once the lower section was secured on the high bay turntable, the nose cone was lowered down until the gap between them closed, and just like that, stacking operations for Ship 32 were officially underway. Down at the launch site, Chief ventured out into the mud flats to bring us some excellent photos of the new asphalt lot out past the suborbital tank farm. While this certainly is not as exciting as a new test stand as many of us had hoped for, a nicer and more permanent parking area other than the side of the highway for is probably a welcome addition for SpaceX's Starbase workforce. Wednesday afternoon, the booster thrust simulator stand was moved out of the ring yard and into Mega Bay 1 to pick up its next puck shucking subject, Booster 11. Meanwhile, the Black Buckner LTR 1220 crane lifted and installed one of the header tank pipes into the payload bay section for Ship 33. A short time later, Booster 11 was lifted off of its transport stand and transferred onto the Booster Puck Shucking Transport Stand in Mega Bay. Late that night, once the booster had been secured to the Puck Shucker, the Mega Bay bridge crane was detached from the booster and it was ready for rollout. Less than a half hour later, Booster 11 was rolled out of Mega Bay 1 and onto Highway 4 as it began its journey to Massey's test site to undergo cryogenic testing and puck shucking to ensure the vehicle is in good shape and ready for engine installation. On Thursday morning, the second to the last of the prefabricated roof sections for the current phase of the Star Factory expansion was lifted and installed. Also on Thursday, Chief caught a liquid oxygen header tank being lifted and installed in what is likely Booster 13's aft section. This tank holds a quantity of liquid oxygen separate from the main tank as a reserve for the landing burn. The round protrusion sticking out of the top of the tank is part of the methane downcomber which feeds the combustible liquid from the tank at the top of the rocket to the engines at the bottom. The methane downcomber also doubles as the header tank for that propellant. Just next to the header tank installation, we can also see the final roof beam of the nose cone section of the Star Factory expansion being lifted and installed onto the final columns. With this beam's installation, the building is rapidly nearing completion of its structural elements. There is some roofing left to be installed between the prefabricated panels of the nose cone area, as well as the final beam and associated roofing on the ring yard ends of the mid-height section that precedes this tallest end of the building. Switching over to Cape Canaveral, on Friday morning, SpaceX recovery vessel Bob headed out to sea with a fairing half on board, likely for fairing retrieval training exercises off the coast. 
That afternoon, ULA launched an Atlas V rocket from Space Launch Complex 41 for the Kuiper Proto Launch mission, delivering the first two satellites of Amazon's Kuiper Constellation to orbit. Around the same time, GatorCam caught Bob as it came back into port after a morning of expected fairing recovery training operations just off the Florida coast. Late on Saturday afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1076 was lifted off the deck of Just Read the Instructions and transferred onto dockside stands for processing. On Sunday, Bob headed back out to sea again. This time, the goal was a long trip downrange for fairing recovery operations for the Falcon Heavy Psyche launch. On Wednesday, Booster 1076 was lifted off the dockside stand and placed onto the transporter for its return to Hangar X to be prepared for its next mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you really like what we're doing here at Lab Padre, consider joining our Patreon and YouTube membership program. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.